Okay, so the last thing we did in the first part, in part one was we did the accruals and prepayments. As you can see, when you have a prepayment adjustment, you deduct it from the original expense there and you manually change it to what it should be. And then when you have a accrual, you add it to the original expense. So as you can see, 34689 was the original expense, but we know 354 was unpaid at the end of the year. But it relates to your accounting year you're paying the accounts for. You manually update it to 35043. Second thing, just to recap, is once you've done that, you have to prepare a list of your admin expenses and then include in your accounting accruals and prepayments adjustments, and then you total it and then you put this amount in the income statement. Once you've done that, you carry on and you prepare the income statement just like you did before. So, everybody see, you've got First bit where you calculate gross profit, no change except for that. Let me just move that. It should be really there level. Okay, move that down. And then this is the bit. Distribution cost, that one, you just get from the trial balance there. Let's see where it is. There it is. 8463, put it in, no change there. You could get a cause and propensity of distribution. You'd have to manually change it like we did before and make sure it included the updated figure, but this one hasn't got any. And that's what I'm talking about. See that figure for admin expenses and income statement? That must agree 100% with what you put in your admin um, expenses schedule when you do your exam or when you do a question from now on. Okay, let's keep going down. Keep going down. As before, you add those two together, bring it over to there. Your profit from and then take it away from your gross profit to calculate your profit from operations. The next bit is new. It's about finance costs. And remember, finance costs. Another word for finance costs is interest. And one of the, the third adjustment you have to do is in the question. Let's go up to the adjustments at the bottom of the trial balance. If you look at number five, it talks about. It says six months bank loan interest is unpaid. So. I want you to now think about this from now. Ignore that it says six months, or sometimes it might say all of the interest is unpaid. All I want you to do is calculate what the interest for 12 months should be. And the way you do it is so you go to the bank loan, and you see highlighted in yellow, it says a 5% bank loan. That's the annual interest rate. And the £20,000 here is how much the, in, um, the actual loan is. So to work out the, an the annual interest, you just take that loan. 20,000 and you times it by 5% which gives you a thousand pounds. That's all you need to do. Ignore the fact that it says six months. One other question is it might say all of the interest is unpaid. Just work out what it should be for 12 months. That a thousand pounds is the 12 months expense and you put it as it says there in the income statement. So if you go down, if you go down, you'll see in the income statement that that Finance cost says a thousand pound, which is remember the twenty thousand. Let's put it there just to remind you. It's very slow. Times five percent. Okay, so interest reduces tax. So don't forget. Sorry, interest re reduces profit from operations. So take it away, and you get profit before tax of thirty thousand one four zero. Okay, this is going to be new tax. From now on, you have to look at the adjustments at the end of the year. You can see number four, it says corporation tax based on the 2012 profits is estimated to be 7687. Okay, you're not tax students, you're account students. All you have to do is see that figure 7687, you put it straight in there. So, always from question. Okay. Take it away, tax reduces your profits, 22543, then it's done. And then this section down here, your retained earnings, is exactly the same as you did before. Balance the start of the year, add the profit for the year, which remember is that figure there, and then add it together, take away any dividends, and you're left with the balance at the end of the year. And that is how you include accruals, prepayments, interest and tax on the income statement. Next. Let's look at the balance sheet.